All right, everybody, welcome to the No Easy Path channel. Uh, this is going to be our brief intro overview video. Part we just want to go ahead and do a kind of 10,000 mile view of the concepts that we're going to be going over in this channel, why we're doing it, and briefly introduce you to some of the personalities, although we've got some specific, uh, more biographical videos coming out for that. So with that said, uh, Patrick, what is No Easy Path? No Easy Path uh, is the channel name, it's our group name, it's our tribe name for now. It's it's a concept that we, we follow, it's kind of like what, what brought us together as a group. Uh, when you think about No Easy Path, I'm not talking about the path you might walk from your driveway to your mailbox, which of course you're going to take the easy path, you walk down the driveway, you're not going to hop through the thorns, bushes. But when it comes to your path through life, which is actually what that's referencing, is uh, that no easy path through life and if you want to gain something in your life if you want to better yourself in your life whether that be uh, physical fitness mental fortitude uh, being a good provider for your family being a good co-worker at work whatever it is you want to get better at you have to work at it and work requires effort and therefore you can't take the easy way out that means no easy path through those life decisions through your everyday oh, nine to five grind, you know, you have to always take the, the challenging path if you actually want to succeed and better yourself. So that's kind of what we stand for, is no easy path, aka a self-reliant lifestyle. Awesome. Anybody else have anything to add to that? <clears throat> well, no, not really. So that, that's going to be uh, probably a common thread. You know, anytime more than two of us get in a room together, there's at least three opinions, and we can't keep those opinions from being heard. We tend to have those come out a little loudly sometimes, so best to give it an easy way out on that one. Um, so why are we doing this, Troy? Well, a big part of that is we want to kind of raise sea level. Um, as educators, we see that the more you kind of raise the level of everybody's knowledge, the better things get. And what we want to do here is we want to create the type of uh, environment in which we want to be self-reliant individuals. So the idea that you get the more people you have in a disaster scenario, for example, who know what they're doing, who have the right skill set, the less extreme that disaster might seem. The more people you get who know what they're doing when you go into a homesteading project, the easier the homesteading project becomes. And so what we want to do is we want to just want to take regular people and kind of raise them up into this idea of self-reliance so that, you know, if there is, heaven forbid, a disaster, or if we decide to bring more people in on a homesteading style scenario, then we have more people who know what they're doing and more of the kind of people that we want to work with. Absolutely. So, anybody else? All right. So, for Patrick and Roy, they're kind of our tech gurus. Uh, Nelson's also a bit of a techie. I am the Crow Magnet caveman who yells at the computer until it does what I want it to do or. And tells me to come fix it. Yeah, or calls Patrick or Nelson or Roy to make the Magic Elf box work. Um, so for Patrick and Roy, why another YouTube channel? I guess I'll kick that question off. Uh, so YouTube channels, I mean, YouTube's come so big now, it's ridiculous. So we're obviously not the first pioneers into this territory. There's hundreds and thousands of other channels that we're competing against. And we're not trying to displace anything, but we are trying to bring you something new, something that's interesting. Uh, one of the first things I would say makes us different uh, is that for one, it, it's not a solo thing here. It is at least four people with different opinions. So you get down-to-earth expectations here. We're not going to be sellouts and just say, this is the best thing you should do. This is why you should do it. We're going to give you our opinions and cross-reference our opinions. Uh, we're going to cover many, many, many different aspects of self-reliance. So the channel is not going to be very... Uh, laser focus like this we're just doing gun stuff or we're just doing knife stuff we're just doing how to cook we're just doing uh, how to service uh, a vehicle anything that we feel like could be a part of self and betterment or that self-reliant lifestyle whether it be the combat stuff whether it be how to balance your checkbook I swear that might actually show up on the channel one day because that's something you need to know how to do to be successful in life we, we're gonna bring it to you and uh, so we'll be covering a lot of different aspects we'll be keeping it fun and realistic. We're not going to be too serious about it. Even though we're very serious about what we do, there's nothing fun about watching the guy who's too serious about what he does. We want to make sure it's still fun and casual. Uh, so, that, you know, stick along with us. You'll get to see not just what we learn, but you'll get to kind of grow with us as we experience new things, learn new things, and teach new things. And one thing that uh, Patrick touched on a little bit was the ways in which we're going to be different. 
Uh, one thing we really want to do is we want to make this information accessible. When you look up things like self-reliance, survivalism, woodcraft, bushcraft, etc. Tribe building. Tribe building. You see a very limited subset of human culture. You see a lot of ex-military uh, and a lot of the mountain man appearance, like Aaron is rocking here, the beard, the kind of wild hair, etc., uh, but there's also, in, within the self-reliance community, there's been a little bit of drama in recent years of people kind of misrepresenting their backgrounds because they're trying so hard to grab that market that they're kind of forgoing what it's really about. And what it's really about is it's about educating. And we want to show that anybody can do this stuff. We're four regular guys, regardless of our backgrounds, and yet we are going to be out there, you know, some of us will be teaching combatives. Some of us will be teaching, you know, things, you know, just a wide range of self-reliant skills. I know, for example, I'm going to be touching on blacksmithing and leatherworking. Anybody can do that. It doesn't take a specialized background to be able to do this stuff. And we kind of want to be able to demonstrate that. And we don't think necessarily that a lot of the channels out there right now are serving that element that anybody can do this element. Yep. Don't have to be a Delta Seal Ninja to butcher a hog or kill rabbits or even, you know, make a budget. Mm -hmm. So with that said, Nelson, talk to us a little bit about skill over background. <clears throat> so skill over background, and um, what I want to say about that mainly is your background, although it may lend credence or weight to what you say, gravitas, if you will, um, I find that too many people use it as the only form of collateral. Um, too many people require you to have been a, a Delta or have been a, a you know black water contractor or something along those lines when at the end of the day what we're looking for is what works and what works best for you. Um, like my background, I was six years United States Air Force. Um, I started off as a translator, changed jobs during training to COM, stuck with COM for the rest of my career. I learned more about combat, survivalism, gun work, knife work, unarmed work outside of my military time than I actually did while in. The extent of my in-work was mainly basics that required to work as a unit and M16 work. While in my own personal time, I took up amateur cage fighting, uh, two rounds, which you can pull up on YouTube. I um, One went well, one, one went well, one not went horrible. so well. <laughs> one, uh, one was a lesson in what uh, winning your first fight, you should learn modesty. Yeah. Um, and then um, you know I just took in a lot more training and seminars and so forth and so on. And the most important thing I learned was, although your background is important, it is important to know where you learn these things, why you learn these things, how have you used these things, skill is skill regardless of background. So if we learn something or if we you know, teach something or show something that we feel like it works for us, there's no harm in trying it for yourself and seeing if it works for you. Because at the end of the day, what works for me, what works for... And what works for Roy, what works for Patrick, is not going to be the same thing that works for you. It may or may not. And so the important thing here that we're trying to teach are skills that are relatable, that work for you, and that are regardless of background. That they stand up on their own, under their own weight and under their own power. Well, I think context is a huge key with that as well. You know, when what we're doing, we're, at this point in our lives, we're all four of us civilians. And we're looking to provide for our family and move, you know, life ahead for ourselves and our progeny as well. And, you know, that's not necessarily the same skill set that you need when you're one of Uncle Sam's Magic Jedi. Um, you know, although the, there's definitely a place for those skill sets and they can be fun to learn. Um, you know, we want to let the skills speak for themselves and we want to stay away from those appeals to authority where when you get into an honest debate about a skill with somebody, you'll say, well, a SEAL told me this. Well, does it work for me is the important point. Mm -hmm. You know, if he's going and knocking down a door with six of his hairy knuckled buddies, that's not as applicable to me as coming home to my house and I find out that my front door is left open and I don't know if there's somebody in the house or not. And I've got my fiance and a kid with me at the time. You know, so th I mean, that, that context is pretty important for us. I'll pick up on, on something I took from what Nelson was just saying. And it was like, some of us are former military, you'll get into more of our background in our individual bios, but he was in the military and he admitted that he learned more about combats and defense and, and tactical stuff outside of military and, and there's a reason for that. And the word I didn't hear that I want to point out is passion. 
uh, you'll notice in your job, whether it be customer service or whether it be working the farm, the people who excel at their job are the ones who find a passion in it because you follow your passion. And that's kind of where we all meet up, is that we have a passion in that self-reliant lifestyle and, and to grow and extend ourselves. So the, the passion is what fuels that excellent knowledge. It's what fuels keeping on top of things and learning more. And so that's why sometimes the skill set supersedes the background because a civilian who has an extreme passion about something like this can definitely uh, take over the top of somebody who had a military background where they were just being told what to do for five years and then after they got out that was it they went back to being uh, a couch potato so don't take the backgrounds too seriously get to know the person and what their passion is all about and that's kind of where I wanted to say, you know, that's where we stand now as part of our channel and what we follow. Or kind of like how I tease the three of you all, you three being the ones with the military background, it's kind of like lowest common denominator university uh, if you don't have the passion for it. You learn yeah. what you had to learn to get through, and that was that. Well, it's the difference between having a job and then, you know, the word passion is getting thrown around a lot. What we run into uh, really often with people that we train with, people that we run into in the combatants community, in the bushcraft community, in the tactical community, a lot of times they have a passion that borders on obsession. And if that's your nine to five, you're going over there and you're learning shooting or you're learning fighting or whatever, it's not something that you're going to take home with you. If you have a passion that you know this is what you live this is what you eat this is what you breathe this is who you are you know Jeff Cooper had a quote he got into the military because he liked to shoot he didn't learn that he liked to shoot because he got into the military you know and I, I think that's a, a lot of um, where we find ourselves so with that you know um, why a tribe and I'll, I'll take point on that um, you know a little bit late last year slash early this year we started reading a book called uh, Way of Men by Jack Donovan. And that he had an eloquent way of putting a lot of the thoughts and ideas that we had had regarding Tribe um, previous to reading his works. Um, you know, a lot of ideas crystallized during that time. And we kind of realized, you know, we had a lot of friends. And the, the modern American male doesn't make a lot of friends, um, doesn't really have a lot of deep relationships. You know, if somebody... If I have a beer with somebody and I'm not a, a complete and total shit bag, they're going to call me best friend, you know, if I do it three or four months in a row. They'll even call me brother, and for us that has a very specific meaning, and there's oaths around that. You know, we looked at this as, okay, so, you know, we started out maybe drinking buddies, then we have guys that start showing up to training, and you find out, oh, you know, these are the guys that can help you move. You know, if you're getting ready to move your house, that's when you find out who your real friends are. It's a sucky job that nobody really wants to do for six or eight hours. And then you find out, oh, well, we're going to go sweat in the sand pits a little bit. And we're going to split each other's face open just a little bit, you know, doing a, some training. We're going to go do live fire exercises. Who's showing up reliably to all of that? And then once we start doing that, we start getting together our families and our, our close relationships, our kin. We start feasting together and we find out that these are people that you really want to spend your life with and you want to invest deeply in relationships and make that conscious effort to build intentional community. You know, this isn't a passing relational fad of, oh, you know, well, you had a, a beer with me last month, but you broke up with your girlfriend and she was really the one I got along with. So screw you. We're never talking again. I'm going to delete you off my Facebook account. Yeah. You know? you Facebook into this? yeah. <laughs> but these are the guys that, you know, we hold ourselves accountable to, um, not just to, maintain a standard and a code of conduct but to I said conduct yeah there conduct not contact uh, yeah I, I can't talk half the time from Kentucky yeah <laughs> but you know when we when we look at that this is also who we're holding ourselves accountable to to build a future not just for our generation but for generations that follow us so keep an eye out for content that we have coming up we're gonna have several videos we're, we've got at least one review coming up in the next week uh, we're gonna have some individual kind of biographical and also philosophical videos coming up on everybody's individual viewpoint and hopefully we're going to be getting out you know back into some training and doing a little bit of filming you know on site training's really uh it's that passion that borders on obsession and if you asked any of our 
girlfriends, fiancés, wives, um, which one it is, they'd probably have a, a little bit different answer, I think, than we would. I have neither to answer to. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Stay single. Um, but with that said, thanks, guys, for uh, watching, and look for our next videos.